And it's all the other things from the financial nature beyond just your investment accounts. There's things that people have paid for. So a prepaid funeral, someone's already made that investment. Someone now needs to know that you've made that investment so that they're not then going and spending money on whatever type of services that you plan or they didn't know you planned because now it's like that was money out the window because now someone's paid for it twice. So there is the investment aspect, but there's also the things that you are spending money on for today that you need to let somebody know about. Welcome to the Midland Money Mindset. This is a podcast that's all about getting your mind right when it comes to all things money. In every episode, we go deep with engaging guests who provide tangible takeaways and a whole lot of joy along the way. I hope you enjoy these conversations as much as I enjoyed having them. Let's dive into today's show. I'm Larry Sprung, your host for the Midland Money Mindset and founder and wealth advisor of Midland Financial. Today's guest is Tara Fakwire, co-founder and COO of True State. Tara has spent the past decade working at a variety of companies from Fortune 500s to billion-dollar startups. With her, she brings to True State a deep understanding of sales, operations, and team management, along with a passion for learning and entrepreneurship. Losing a loved one is overwhelming, and True State was founded to help navigate these challenging times by providing comprehensive, transparent, and affordable estate administration services. The average executor devotes more than 500 hours of their own time and $10,000 settling a loved one's estate. Those who can afford to do so often seek expensive legal representation, and the reality is that many estate administrations don't require lawyers or legal fees. Tara is driven by True State's mission as she has personally experienced two estate administrations within a 12-month period. She says the stress and anxiety of settling an estate is felt by an entire family, and it's the reason True State was founded, to help people administer estates quickly, efficiently, and correctly. Listen in and hear about Tara's journey to founding a company that will help countless people and how her own personal experiences helped her see and uncover the need. Well, hello, everybody. Larry Sprung here, and I have the pleasure of having Tara Fakwire, the co-founder and COO of True State with us today. Thanks for joining us today, Tara. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So before we get into True State and what it's all about and and what you guys do, uh, you know, I want my listeners to understand your background, where you came from, what you did before this. So can you tell us about your path to coming to co-found True State? Sure. So I have what I would call a non-traditional career path. I've done a little bit of everything, but all of that, the theme throughout it is basically sales, operations, and strategy. So I have worked for large companies such as Nordstrom. I've worked for Rent the Runway, which is a huge startup. I'm sure many people know about that in New York City and now beyond New York City. And done some national sales for community banks through a software company. So I didn't take the traditional career route, but I really got a lot of experience and it led me to where I am today because I'm really able to put that all together and really lean on my experience, which is exciting. That's great. And I think you think it's unique, but I will tell you from talking and and having these shows with a number of entrepreneurs and founders, I don't think any of them really take a traditional path to where they are. You know, nobody sets out, hey, I'm going to found this company (laughs) that's going to do this initially. Mm -hmm. It's usually some random walk that ends them (laughs) up as a entrepreneur, right? Exactly. Because you really experience a lot of different things and you're like, oh, this could be interesting. And it does land you in an interesting way. Yeah, that's awesome. So let's tell our listeners, because, you know, being in wealth management like we are, we talk with clients all the time as far as when there's a death in the family. And that's really where True State comes in. So can you tell our listeners about True State, what it's all about and what you do? Absolutely. 
So True State was founded because my business partner, she's a former trust and estates attorney, and realized that there was just a lot of inefficiency in the estate administration process. And I personally have administered two estates and also found that as a layperson, that it's really hard to administer a loved one's estate. So we realized that there really needed to be something better out there for folks. And that's how True State was born, really with her and the my business partner in the driver's seat of realizing that most of what you do in an estate administration is strictly administrative and it's not legal work. So that's why we were able to build a company that focuses really on that executor and doing all those administrative tasks for them. So we are a tech company at our core, but that technology backs the process of making things more efficient. Our clients, our end clients are really interacting with our estate concierge which are wonderful people who really talk people through the entire estate administration process. But the reason why True State is what it is and why people love working with us is because we're doing everything for them. So while we are tech, we like to actually say that we're tech in touch, we're doing all those hard tasks for people. So there, our clients are not the people who are waiting on the phone on hold for three hours with, I won't name you know any right. institutions, right. but we're doing all that for them and so that they can have the space to grieve and go back and spend time with people who are there for them, their friends, family, get back to work so they don't have this enormous task of settling an estate. Yeah, I think it's amazing because we all have, or people that we've worked with and what we've seen, and I'm sure... You've heard stories and you've seen it yourself. Everybody feels honored when their loved one or somebody they know names them as their executor or yes. executrix or trustee. Mm-hmm. And you feel like this level of honor that this person thinks of you in such a high regard that they want you to take care of their yeah. estate. And when push comes to shove and you're at that moment where you've lost your loved one, you're now the executor, executrix, or even a trustee even. It's a miserable job. (laughs) I haven't met one trustee or one executor or executrix that was like, oh, this was very rewarding and (laughs) easy. You know, it's just not one of those things. And I think it's state administration and locating and gathering the assets. It's an arduous task. So Mm -hmm. because of that and because you guys are really and the most large majority of the process is task driven and not legal driven, administrative Mm -hmm. driven and not legal driven. How does that work? Do you guys work in conjunction with a client's legal counsel? How does that work with True State? If I want to work with you, do I need a lawyer at all or Mm -hmm. do you guys handle everything really? Great question. So we really work with a client's most trusted advisor. So most of the time that ends up being the wealth manager, but we also work with their lawyers, their accountants. And the reason for that is because you know, think about when someone, a loved one passes away, you notify your, you know, your immediate family, but then you probably call a lawyer, you call your wealth man or that person's wealth manager. So we work with those trusted advisors to learn more about that family. However, we don't necessarily need a lawyer on every estate. And there's many of estates we don't need a lawyer at all. The great thing about True State and the way that we do work with a lawyer is then that any legal work that needs to be done, we're able to keep it to just the legal work. So the client is using True State for the administrative tasks and a lawyer where their expertise is needed for that actual legal work. So that's how we keep costs down. But in 90% of our administrations, we actually don't need a lawyer, but there are going to be times where complex issues come up. Maybe something is being contested and we will absolutely reach out to a lawyer. It can be someone in our network or if that client has a, a great relationship with a lawyer that they know and trust, by all means, they can use their own. Yeah. So, I mean, are there parts of the administration process that you guys can't handle? No, we can really do everything from beginning to end. However, there are certain states that have different guidelines as far as probate goes. So for states where a client can't represent themselves, they would need a lawyer to do so. And in that, you know, in that space, we would make sure that we reach out to a lawyer in that state if that client doesn't have it. But really, the entire estate is administrative. And again, it's more if legal issues pop up, then we will need a lawyer. But most of the time it is smooth sailing, but not everything is uh, (laughs) always as it should be. Yeah. So I guess what you're saying is you really are not a threat, if you will, for lack of a better word, to the traditional estate planning attorney. In essence, what I'm hearing is it's actually a really nice compliment Mm -hmm. because many times the estate planning attorney wants to 
focus on the legal issues, the legal concerns. Many of them will get involved in the administration process, but in some regard, that takes up a lot of hours, a lot of time of a paralegal or their administrative staff that they could be working on more legal hours, right? Legal Mm -hmm. issues. And at the same time, on the client side of the equation, it's really saving them money, which we'll get into later in terms of they're not paying an hourly rate for somebody to do these hourly rate to a law firm Mm -hmm. to do these administrative tasks that really don't need that legal expertise or background to handle. Absolutely. You're 100% correct with that. And actually, many of the estates that we administer today are referred to us from lawyers for just that reason. You know, they went to law school to handle those complex legal issues, not to close out somebody's cable bill. And that's important work. Somebody has to do it, but they want to use their expertise in the correct way. But they also want to give their clients, especially if they've had a long relationship with a client who passed, they want to make sure that they're caring for that family. And it really eats up their bandwidth if they have to do this administration because their paralegals are working on things. They are. So they actually outsource that to us. And one of the great ways that we work with lawyers, to your point about the estate planning, is often when someone goes through an administration, they're thinking, oh, my goodness, I need to get my own life in order. Mm -hmm. I've been waiting too long. So we can actually refer that planning work right back to the lawyer who referred us the administration. So it actually works really well. And we truly are a complement to their practice. Yeah, it like creates its own Mm -hmm. self-sufficient feedback loop and referral loop, if you will. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, I know, I wish I knew guys many years ago, for example, my own personal story. My grandfather passed away, and I don't know if this is still a major issue, but my grandfather passed away, and my grandmother was still living at the time. They didn't have much in the way of assets, and there wasn't really much in his name at all. But I remember distinctly one of the biggest problems we had was he had a car lease. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've experienced that, if it's still a major issue, but at that time, which was many years ago, it was a big issue. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother didn't drive. Mm -hmm. My grandmother didn't even have a driver's license. And there were still like 18 months left to this lease. And we didn't feel like we wanted to hire an attorney to handle this. So I actually called and luckily I got the leasing company to see it our way and they ended up taking the car back and and Mm -hmm. relieving us of the lease. But those are things that I remember it took me at least two, three hours Mm -hmm. of contacting them back and forth. There was no email back then, really, (laughs) you know, phone calls back and Mm -hmm. forth just to resolve that issue. Right. And it's also the stress of on top of it all. You're like, what am I supposed to do? Am I doing this right? And it just becomes this enormous job. So beyond the the hours you're spending, I'm sure there was conversations that you had about what to do about it. And, you know, that's one of the things people always think about the house. Oh, I got to get rid of the house or I'm going to, you know, so-and-so in the family is going to take it over, whatever it is. But the car, for some reason, most people have one, but it's this weird, complex issue that people don't really think about until they actually have to deal with it. So I actually have a personal car story as well. When my grandmother passed away, I thought I was doing the right thing. I decided to, her car was in her driveway and it was uh, just a few days before Christmas. So I thought, yeah, I don't want to leave her car in her driveway. I'll take it to my house for safekeeping. A storm came through, tree fell on the car. And I was like, oh my goodness, what do I do? Because now I have to call the insurance company and tell them that my grandmother just passed away and basically the car's totaled. Like it becomes this enormous thing that you weren't prepared for. Right. (laughs) I did resolve it, but it was those types of issues that pop up that really, I obviously, you know, having been part of True State now, I I wish I had True State at the time because it would have just eased that burden of the, the entire process. Yeah. I mean, in my case, if it wasn't a lease and he owned the car, I would have just sold it and paid off the loan. But the lease, like it was like, (laughs) they they were like, oh, well, you got to pay it for the next 18 months. I'm like, oh, great. So it'll just sit on the driveway and rot. You know, do you really want to take that car back? And, you know, we finally got him to see it our way. So that was good. But you personally have gone through a couple of administrations. You obviously have your finger on the pulse of what Mm -hmm. True State does. Can you walk us through a real life client situation on how True State help that client handle their loved one's estate administration quickly and smoothly because you guys were involved? Absolutely. So we do work with clients at any point in the process, but most of our clients come to True State really before they've gotten started. And it's usually through one of our 
referral partners, whether it's a lawyer or wealth manager. And really, every client is unique. But really, you know, what we do from the get-go is we have a, a meeting with really the executor, but often there's other family members who they aren't named as executor, but they will be involved in the process. So that's really one of our first points of contact is getting everybody on board and, and walking them through our process. So we have a process, but, you know, we're flexible based on the estate because things pop up. But as far as a, you know, a client story, when even before we really did our official launch, we had a client that we were working with because she had just kind of been at her wits end with it. It had been a year, the estate had been open for a year. She was really just kind of you know, she was exhausted. It was just too much. She works full time and she really didn't have any other people to lean on during the process. And we took it over for her. And we just actually ended up closing that estate a few months ago because the states do tend to stay open longer because you're dealing with all sorts of agencies. But, you know, she has told us time and time again that just the stress that was alleviated because she decided to work with us really gave her her life back. And, you know, that's such an amazing thing for a client to say. And really our clients have become our largest sales force because I think when people think about estate administration and, you know, especially if you haven't experienced it, it's, you think about it more in a transactional nature, but at the core of it is someone who's grieving and they just lost a loved one. And those simple tasks that, well, I you know, say simple, but even calling the cable company on your own account can be kind of a pain. <laughs> but if you're doing it on behalf of a loved one, it's just, it's emotionally draining. So she really has been able to just focus on her work, focus on her kids, and really be able to truly get her life back because she wasn't continuing to go down this path of having to reiterate this story over and over again to a different agency about the loss of her mom. So That's amazing. And mm -hmm. I think a very testament to what can be done and how True State can help in this administration process. Because like mm -hmm. you said, it's a tough time as it is. And then every time you make that phone call, you get in that reminder mm -hmm. and it just kind of brings everything back up. And I, I would imagine if they don't have somebody like you or somebody else that they could lean on, it's almost like paralysis sets in and is like, I'll deal with this later. Yeah. Why deal with it now? Exactly. So what are some of the most complicated things that you come across in the estate administration process? Are there certain avenues that no matter who it is, tend to be more difficult and challenging for you to overcome and, and help your clients get, get across the goal line with? So this does not happen in every estate. But you had mentioned your grandparents earlier and that you were doing everything properly and rolling over your grandfather's estate to your grandmother. Often that doesn't happen. So when a spouse passes away and there's that surviving spouse, a lot of people think that that estate just kind of stays as is. So then when we get to it, with, when that surviving spouse has now passed, there's actually two estates to administer. And that's where the real complexities come in. So especially if that first spouse passed 15 years ago and now the surviving spouse has passed away, you're now going back 15 years and having to close an estate that was should have been opened and closed 15 years ago. So while it doesn't happen all the time, we do see it. And actually one of our clients they were using us for th their mother's estate, found out that an estate that hadn't been closed through a grandfather, a piece of property was still out there. We had to reopen that estate, close that, get that sorted to then actually fully close his mother's estate. So those are the types of things that are harder because you're going along, you're thinking that everything's going great. And then this piece pops up. And you're like, oh, I was mm -hmm. not expecting that. And frankly, neither was the client, right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was all news to them too. So, you know, kind of word of advice here, every person has an estate. Regardless how large, how small, every person has an estate and every estate has to be properly closed. Yeah. I think one of the things we see a lot is when the first spouse passes mm -hmm. and then the second spouse wants to sell the house, for example, and technically they're entitled to a 50 percent step up in basis on mm -hmm. that on that property. And a lot of times that's overlooked and missed mm -hmm. and they end up perhaps paying capital gains on an asset that they shouldn't. And mm -hmm. I know that's something that you guys are proactive in the estate administration piece to make mm -hmm. sure that that doesn't happen. So that's another area that could be a huge, huge benefit to clients. 
Absolutely. And those were the things too, that there's estate planning, but we also talk about estate prepping and really thinking through kind of all your assets and really what the true plan is to get that. So one of the things we say is estate planning is really identifying the buckets to which assets go into. Estate administration is getting the water to the buckets. What are some prepping activities, if you will, you can do today to kind of push that water a little closer to that bucket and and thinking those scenarios through? Because I think a lot of people, they don't think the situation you just talked about, they're not thinking that through today. And I get it. Why would you? But take a little time to think that through because you might come up with a scenario that suits you better. Yeah. So, I mean, let's say I'm somebody who right now is listening. I'm like, hey, you know what? I want to get things. I want to start making this process smoother for my executor, executrix, mm-hmm. et cetera, either for themselves or even a loved one, let's say. What are some things, maybe mm-hmm. a couple of top things that people should be doing while they're alive and well to make mm-hmm. that process smoother for them? Sure. So one of the most important things you can do is talk to your family, talk to that executor, really, because a lot of people have great estate plans and it is an absolute surprise that that to that executor that they're even named as an executor or even kind of what those person that person's wishes are. So it's great to plan, but planning without the follow up communication just really becomes a <laughs> a surprise to a lot right. of people. So Having that conversation, and I know it can be super awkward and just weird, and people don't want to talk about it because no one wants to talk about it, but I guarantee you, and we know this from working with clients, it's worth the 25-minute uncomfortable conversation today because it will truly make the lives of those uh, of your surviving family members so much easier if, you know, when and if, you know, you were to pass away because simple things that you're like, oh, well, I put that in the safe. What if somebody doesn't know where the safe is? What if somebody doesn't know how to access it? That becomes so just frustrating and emotionally draining to people. So that's where I can say, you know, have that conversation. At True State, we do have an estate prep tool that people can use to essentially walk through all the areas of their estate and really shed some light on maybe some things that they should be thinking about doing today. But really, the biggest and most important thing to do is to have that conversation. Right. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And I think in addition to the uncomfortable nature about mortality, Mm -hmm. I think the other side of the equation is people have an uncomfortability about talking about the financial aspects Mm -hmm. of things. And what we tell people is, you know what, you don't necessarily have to tell your loved ones exactly how much or what the dollars and cents are. Exactly. That's not the important piece. The real important piece is for them to understand where and who to go to to get the information needed in order to do what they need to do for your estate. 100%. And we hear that a lot. We'll be talking to a, a client. They're like, well, I don't want my son or daughter to know how much money is in there. Totally get it, right? I right. <laughs> get right. that. They don't need to know how much money is in there, but they do need to know where that money is held because part of the discovery of it is just knowing, to your point, who to contact. You know, is it their wealth manager? And that wealth manager knows the 90% about their financial history. Or do they not know anything? Those are the types of things. You don't have to tell somebody your account balance. Right. But you do need to There's an education process there because people feel like, hey, in this process, in this conversation, that's definitely going to come up. Right. And we try to impart upon them that if you wanted to, it can, but Mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily have to. Right. Right. Exactly. And it's all the other things, you know, from the financial nature beyond just your investment accounts. There's things that people have paid for. So a prepaid funeral, someone's already made that investment. Someone now needs to know that you've made that investment so that they're not then going and spending spending money on whatever type of services that you planned or right. you know or didn't they didn't know you planned because now it's like that was money out the window because now someone's paid for it twice. So it's you know there is the investment aspect but there's also the things that you are spending money on for today that you need to let somebody know about. Agreed. Are there any specific sized estates that you would say true state may not be a good fit for that it should go through a law firm and an estate planning attorney rather than true state. And if that's the case, where is true state's niche? Mm -hmm. Where are you like in that sweet spot for those that are listening? Sure. So we can actually administer any size of state. However, our sweet spot is really estates under 10, 12 million or so. And the reason we say that is because 
really once you get above that 10, 12 million dollars, that person probably has a team of people ready to go. Right. So their families aren't looking for additional resources. But for that, you know, those estates underneath that 10, 12 million, you know, there's there's a lot of tasks that need to be done. And often the smaller estates, and I'm not saying that $5 million estate is small in any way, but smaller estates actually can often be more complex than the larger estates. And for the same reason I just said, there's usually a team of people involved who Mm -hmm. have organized things very nicely. But for people who maybe have a wealth manager doing, you know, 50% of their investing, they're doing some, but then they're doing their own who knows what, or they have 10 different community bank accounts that they've opened and haven't consolidated those. There's just a lot more things to go through when someone is really doing things on their own. And the other thing we talk about too is for those estates under the, you know, let's say under the $10 million mark, someone has worked really hard to earn that wealth throughout their lifetime. And they probably weren't intending for it to go towards large fees. So At True State, our goal is to really keep as much money in the account so that the beneficiaries can truly benefit from it. So it's really just kind of looking at it from really who could use our services more than what estates we can administer. Now, somebody who's under that $10 million mark that doesn't have that team, that doesn't maybe have everything kind of laid out in Mm -hmm. in a very nice fashion for them or their family, If they go ahead and they work with a firm like you guys, True State, and there comes an opportunity or a need, let's say they don't have any connection to an estate planning attorney or a team like that, Mm -hmm. are there instances where you say, hey, there's a situation here that we need to have handled by an attorney? Obviously, if you have one or know somebody, we'll be happy to work with them, or we have a team that we can go to to refer you to. Does that happen as well in in certain instances? Yes, and both solutions are perfect for us. We can obviously refer to someone in our network, or we can, they have an existing relationship. So we are very clear that we don't do the legal work, and that's We don't want to. (laughs) Um, There's a whole, you know, slew of lawyers out there who could do that work for us. And it really helps us with those partnerships. So we absolutely outsource the legal work. Great. It's interesting work. And I think you guys have filled a need and a void that's out there. And I'm sure we'll be seeing more of True State. But for now, I want to pivot for a second to the business side of things. Where does your entrepreneurial bug come from for True State? You know, where does that stem from? So we joke that it started when I was 11, you know, selling snacks and beverages to golfers. And we used to live on a golf course. And I actually got kicked off the golf course by the country club management because I was out selling their golf cart, you know, their beverage golf cart. So that's where we we think it started. (laughs) Okay. But really, you know, since then, I come from a long line of entrepreneurs and I really love building things and really being able to see things go from an idea into a full-fledged business. So with that, there comes some risk-taking. And I think I'm just one of those people who is very much like, well, let's jump and see how it goes and not really worry too much about all the things that could necessarily go go wrong. So I think it's just kind of one of those things that is in me. That's great. That's great. So one of the things that obviously you guys couldn't have planned for when you were launching this company was the pandemic, yeah. right? And you were really planning on launching this thing right in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. So how has it been launching a company during the pandemic? And what do you see as additional challenges and or opportunities perhaps that have arisen out of launching a new company during the pandemic? Sure. So to your point, we were in planning well before. I mean, any of us would have thought we'd be here in May of 2021, still kind of coming out of this. But it's one of those things that I I guess for me, I'm a glass half full type of person. So I said, okay, well, we have to do, you know, there's no perfect time. Right. But with that, we were very concerned about launching in the middle of this because we didn't want to be in a situation where we were perceived as ambulance chasers in any way, because that's not why we built True State. You know, True State was launched to truly help people. It just so happened that kind of the death rate and people passing was constant. And it was something that you were hearing about all the time. 
But with that, I do feel that opportunities did come out of that. And one of the main things is that people really took to technology and all generations. So, you know, I use my grandparents as an example. And prior to the pandemic, they were not on Zoom. I don't think they knew what Zoom was. You know, right. now they're on Zoom all the time. <laughs> and because we're a business that for services the nation, we are a remote business and always have been. So to have people who are now comfortable with technology be able to just hop on Zoom and communicate with us and connect with us, that's been really powerful for us. Have there been any additional challenges that you've seen as a result? Not so much from a business standpoint. And there's always challenges as far as this is an uncomfortable topic for people. So I don't think that has changed because of the pandemic. I think that would have been the same anyhow. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Listen, I understand and I agree with you for all those people out there that would have thought that launching this would have been opportunistic. Mm -hmm. The reality is most people who haven't started a business don't realize that it's not something that you just wake up one day and then you have it launched sure. 24 <laughs> hours later. It was something that you guys had put a lot of planning and work behind. And mm -hmm. it just so happened your timing was a little bit off and <laughs> right. would have looked bad. So that's great. But, uh, you know, listen, I think wherever there are challenges, there are opportunities. And like you've said, I mean, technology has been on this huge mm -hmm. curve and there are people who've never had technology that have it now. Mm -hmm. There are people who've never used technology that have to use it now. So that's uh, going to be a huge benefit to you and True State going forward, I'm absolutely, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So what's up next for Tara Fuckwire? <laughs> And true state, what big moves are on the horizon? Oh, well, you know, I think the, the biggest thing that we are excited about is we have some new and improved products that we'll be launching. Can't get into too much detail yet, but some really great products that will bring people together, their core group of advisors together in a way that is easy for all of them in, to interact from a technology, you know, technology platform to really kind of get more eyes on all things estate. So, you know, that's something we'll be debuting soon. And like I said, can't go into too much detail there because we're still in build, but that's something we're very excited about to be launching. That's great. Well, listen, I appreciate your time spending with us today, Tara, and we end every show by asking each of our guests the same question, which is, what did you do today? that brought you joy and put you in the right mindset for success. <laughs> this is the Midland Money Mindset, so we have to talk yes. about that. So my answer to that is probably, you know, pretty cheesy, but I have to make my bed every single day. And I know that a lot of people do that, but it is truly that first step you do that is something to check off your list. And it just, for me, it's the thing I have to do to really start my day. So making the bed is important to me. You know, it, it amazes me. Everybody, when we, uh, there are a number of people, not everybody, but a number of people we ask that question to, they always say it's, it, they, a lot of them say it's going to sound cheesy, but it's <laughs> it doesn't. It makes sense. And actually, one of our guests who's been on the show already said the same thing. And his whole reason was, I feel like a sense of accomplishment mm -hmm. to start the day and I got something done, which makes a lot of sense. So I don't think it's cheesy. I think it makes a lot of sense yeah. and it's a great way to kick things off. Absolutely. And if I don't make the bed for some reason, like something, my phone rings and I, you know, run downstairs and I come back at the end of the day. I'm like, oh, my bed is now. I have to make it now at six o'clock. Like this just seems terrible. Oh, uh, that's funny. Yeah. So I get it. I get it. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. We'll have all of your contact information in the show notes. If people want to find you and learn more about True State, where do they go? www.truestate.com and that's T-R-U-S-T-A-T-E. Great. Okay. We'll have that in the show notes. Thank you so much, Tara, and uh, make it a great day. You as well. I want to thank Tara Fakwire for being a guest on the Midland Money Mindset. Tara has taken a problem that she faced personally and created a solution for others so they do not face the same struggle that she did. True State is not for every estate, but those that are a good fit will certainly feel relief during what is typically a difficult time. The True State team are there to help make the process smoother, less time-consuming, and less expensive than traditional routes. They have truly filled a need.
Tara and True State can be found across all social media platforms, and all the contact information needed to find them can be found in the show notes. Thank you for joining us this week on the Midland Money Mindset. Make sure you visit our website at midlandmoneymindset.com and smash the subscribe button so you don't miss a show. We encourage you to help others find our valuable content, and please don't keep us a secret. You can also schedule an Is There a Fit call right from our website or by using the link that you'll find in the description section of your podcast player or app. And be sure to join us for our next episode to learn more about getting your mind right when it comes to all things money. The opinions voiced in the Midland Money Mindset Show with Lawrence Sprung are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All indices are unmanaged and may not be invested into directly. Investing involves risk, including possible loss of principal. No strategy ensures success or protects against loss. To determine what may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, financial or tax advisor prior to investing. Investment advisory services offered through CWM LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Guests on the Midland Money Mindset Show are not affiliated with CWM LLC.